Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, spark testing steel. Okay, so first, what is spark testing? Well, when you take a piece of steel and push it up against a grinder, it could be a, a belt grinder or a bench grinder, but anything that grinds steel, it'll throw off a big bunch of sparks. And different kinds of steel throw off different sorts of sparks, and so this can be used as a rough way of identifying a particular kind of steel that you don't know the composition of. Now, if you guys have been following me for a while, you'll probably know that uh, I'm not a real huge fan of what's known as mystery steel. So mystery steel is basically when you, you know, find a piece of steel at work in a scrap pile or cousin Kenny hands you a piece of steel and says, hey, this will make a great knife. Um, you know, there are a million places that you can find little bits and pieces of steel and, uh, you know, they might or might not be suitable for making into a knife. The reason that I'm not a big fan of mystery steel is that, you know, if you get a piece of steel and you heat treat it incorrectly, you'll end up with something that is not suitable for making a knife. Some kinds of steel can be heat treated, some can't. Some steels have very finicky heat treating uh, procedures. Some of them are fairly forgiving. And if you don't know fairly precisely what kind of steel you're using, you can mess up your knife, spend a whole bunch of time on something that ultimately is, you know, just not suitable for a cutting tool. That said, I know that there are tons of guys out there who find pieces of steel and they say, you know, hey, I want to make a knife out of this. So for you guys, what I'm going to do here is show some ways of, you know, at least narrowing down what kind of steel you've got and maybe getting a sense of whether it can be used for a knife at all, first off, and second, uh, you know, what kind of heat treat might be suitable for that steel. So with all of that in mind, let's go ahead and jump into this and do a little spark testing. Let's start with the most commonly available steel on the planet. This is low carbon, simple steel, this sort of stuff used for rebar, I-beams, etc. You'll see it throws long sparks, sort of like little meteorites. If you see steel referred to as mild steel, welding steel, structural steel, A36, these are terms of varying specificity that all describe the same general category of steels, all of which are too low in carbon to be used for knife making. Why? because they can't be hardened. If you make a knife out of low carbon steel, the edge will get dull in a heartbeat. Now, if you don't have professional heat treating equipment, then your ideal steel will be a high carbon steel of the sort designated in the US as 10 series steels. 1050, 1075, 1084, 1095, and some close cousins like W1 or W2. Basically, high carbon steels throw very sparky sparks. The spark goes flying off the grinder, and then at a certain point, each individual spark breaks into its own little ball of sparks, like this. Sort of looks like dandelions. This right here is 1045, which is just on the edge of hardenability. Anything underneath that you can't make a knife from. And frankly, this is not ideal knife steel. Then. 1050, a medium carbon steel that's just hardenable in water. So now we're increasing the carbon in the steel again, going up to 1075. Now 1084, which also has a higher manganese content than these other ones. then on to 1095. As the numbers go up, the carbon content goes up. And you'll also notice as that happens, as the carbon goes up, the sparks tend to run shorter and to break apart into these little dandelion configurations quicker. 
so it has the effect of being brighter. Here's a piece of super high carbon tomahogany, probably well over 1%, and with no manganese. Even sparkier, even shorter arcs to those sparks. 01, similar to 1095, but with much higher manganese content and sometimes a pinch of tungsten. 01 actually is probably the ideal starter steel for new knife makers. It typically can be found in the form of drill rod. 5160, it's a medium carbon steel with some chromium. 52100, it's a bearing steel, very high carbon, with a goodly pinch of chromium. Now, a few that are slightly more heavily alloyed. L6, a medium carbon nickel steel. Fifteen and twenty, another nickel steel. Eighty CRV two. S five. It's a shock resistant silicon steel. Hitachi blue, super high carbon, plus some other odds and ends, chromium and some other things. Now everything you've seen up to this point can be used to make a knife in a relatively primitive home shop. Now let's look at some steels that you don't want to use. Hey guys, I'm jumping in here real quick to let you know that I recently partnered up with Patreon, a service that helps creators find partners to support their efforts. Now I put in literally hundreds of hours of work on this channel, a fair amount of money, all of it to help you guys learn stuff. So if you find value in the channel and you want to find a way to give a little bit back and help me make more videos, more frequently, better videos, just click the link for Patreon or the card, go to my Patreon page, help me help you. Okay, so now we're turning to the bad stuff, the steels that you want to stay away from. This first steel is 316 stainless. None of those little dandelion sparklers. 316 is in a general category called austenitic stainless steels, which includes 303, 304, a whole bunch of other steels, and those steels are not capable of being hardened. Now some stainless steels that are suitable for knife making. 440C, the classic cutlery stainless, and here are a slew of other ones. Now these are good steels, but here's the problem. They all heat treat very differently, and if you don't know one from the next, you're wasting your time. You also need to have fairly specialized heat treating equipment, again, or you just really can't get it to optimal hardness. Now D2, an excellent tool steel, lots of chromium, but not strictly stainless. But this is not for the heat it to cherry red and dunk it in a bucket of transmission fluid crowd. A little more finicky to heat treat. PD number one, lots of chromium, and again, very specialized heat treating regimen. So something you'll notice about steels with lots of chromium is that the sparks kind of ramp up. At first contact with the belt, they just throw some very small red sparks. Then, as the sample gets hotter, they throw more sparks, whereas high carbon steels just kind of explode with sparks at the very first touch to the grinder. So that's a pretty good range of various sorts of steels that you might run into. There are all kinds of wacky steels out there. But nine times out of ten, the steel that you find at scrap yards and, you know, in the back of somebody's garage is going to be some flavor of mild steel. But if you're lucky, it'll be something you can harden like a high carbon steel. So, bottom line, spark testing will only take you so far with your mystery steel. I've spent nearly two decades grinding steel, and frankly, I have a pretty hard time telling some of these steels apart just based on the sparks, even some of them that are very different from each other in composition. So, what use is spark testing? Well, 
it can help you rule out some steels, stainless steels, mild steels, maybe a few others, so that you don't waste your time making a knife out of something that's better suited for making a kitchen sink. Or again, of course, as we've discussed about stainless steels, there are a variety of stainless steels that make for great knife steels, but if you don't have the right kind of equipment to heat treat them, you'll basically be wasting your time with them. So, to my mind, it's kind of penny wise, pound foolish to, to you know, spend tons of time messing around with mystery steel. But, the flip side of this is, it can be kind of cool. You learn something about steel by finding out what its qualities are without really knowing up front. So, you know, if, if, you, if you view it as kind of an interesting little puzzle, a little mystery, um, and you're not so focused on making a perfect knife, this can actually be a great way of exploring the qualities of steel and, you know, finding out more about the most important material that every knife maker is going to have to work with. Hey guys, if you found value in this video, I hope you'll consider partnering with the channel to help us bring more videos, better videos, more knives, more techniques, all that cool stuff. Click the link to Patreon to help this channel. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, bro, what are you waiting on? And check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Also, if you're into Japanese swords, check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you'll see more of my work and where you'll find videos about the making of Japanese swords, along with mounting, fittings, polishing, hamones, all kinds of good stuff. Now, more videos.